Okay, so the final piece of the CPU puzzle, the 13900K. We did the 13600K, we did the 13700K, and we did the 7950X. You can check back in the previous videos for those results. Now, the 13900K is the last CPU in the stack to benchmark. Now, last time we saw this was in that preview where I was doing that consult and the guy had an early sample of this chip. Now, before we even get into this, the amount of misquoting on the internet is out of control. Now I see why people are so careful with their words because I said one thing, everyone interpreted it in 20 different ways. What I said was the 13900K was 1% faster than a 12900K with the 13900K using MDI and the 12900K using ADI. Also, with that being said, this was with DDR5 MDI. I do not know the results with DDR5 ADI, nor do I know the results with DDR4 BDI, but maybe add another percent or two maximum at the end of the day. I said I didn't know what the results would be with BDI or ADI. Now, that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We got the 13900K, I overclocked it to 5.6 gigahertz all the cores, and I also got the memory to 7800 C34 on DDR5. I could not get it to 8000. I tried. Um, could be for a myriad of reasons. It could be the CPU itself doesn't have a good memory controller. Could be my motherboard. Could be my memory sticks. There's not really a way to know unless you have multiples of each and you can kind of bin them and combine them to see which ones perform the best, right? Just... For this sample with my motherboard, my ADI, I did get, however, 7800 100% stable. Speaking of memory controllers, this one only does 4133C16, so that's what we benchmarked it at for the DDR4 results. For the 12900K, we're using the same one as before, 7600C34. And then we got the 7950X, the AMD CPU. Same as all the other results, 5.4, 6400 C30, and uh, 2133 on the fabric clock. All content on this channel is supporter backed, no product samples, no sponsorships, only unbiased journalistic integrity. When you gotta pay for a product with your own money, you're much more likely to review it properly. All of these systems were benchmarked on a maxed out RTX 4090 with a 600 watt power limit to remove all GPU bottlenecks. Because we're benchmarking four different configurations today, um, the, the, the graph got kind of uh, squishy, but we're just gonna skip the 4K results for today's video because all of these configurations, like all four of the CPUs, they all max out the 4090 at 4K. So all the results for all of them are identical. So um, if you're a 4K gamer, you can go with any one of these CPUs and you're gonna be totally fine. You're gonna max it out, don't worry about that. So today we're gonna be focusing on 1080p and 1440p numbers. Now, let's go see what Intel's top dog can do against this previous generation and AMD's best. Let's go. All right, same as always, Tomb Raider is up first and the 13900K DDR5 is 5% faster than the 12900K DDR5 and 3% faster in the 1% lows. It is also roughly 4% faster than the 7950X in the 1% lows. So um, I mean, if you actually take a step back and look at all of the FPS here in 1080p and 1440p, you're well above 300 and 220 in the lows here. So you're going to have functionally the exact same gaming experience on all of these setups. Horizon Zero Dawn up next, and the 13900K has a 5% lead over the 12900K, tying up with the 7950X in this game. Horizon Zero Dawn does love those AMD CPUs. The 7950X actually takes the lead in 1440p by maintaining that 171, 1% low. Once again, take a step back, and all four of these configurations are basically an identical gaming experience, and they are all neck and neck. 
Cyberpunk is up next. Now, every time I benchmark this game with DDR4, that actually ends up being the fastest result. It was the same with the 12900K as well with DDR4. It just seems to just prefer DDR4 for just whatever reason that is. So the victory here on the 13900K is because of that DDR4, not exactly the CPU itself. If you take a look at the DDR5 results, though, basically just run to run variance and margin of error so all of these cpu i mean we're, we're we're gpu bound it is ray tracing right but all of these cpus are all functionally the exact same but if you are a cyberpunk connoisseur maybe you want to opt for that ddr4 assassin's creed valhalla is next and this game still seems to be gpu bound even in 1080p and even with an rtx 40 90 so all the results here from top to bottom are all margin of error and within run to run variant so i'm probably gonna not benchmark this game in the future going forward just because this is completely useless i thought maybe with a 40 90 we would see a difference but no this game is just it's yeah it is what it is rift breaker is up next and we have a nice little three and a half percent lead for the 13900k ddr5 result now this game for some reason is kind of the only game i've found so far that really does not like the amd cpus they all even the 7700x they all perform brutally bad in this game with the amd c it's only it's the only game it's the only game so I would still say that if you're an RTS player, for now, like a really heavy RTS player with a lot of AI, you might want to stay away from AMD for now. Civilization 6 is up next. This is probably another one where we're going to have to start moving away from in terms of benchmarks. All of these CPUs are honestly so fast that eh, there's barely any difference whatsoever. Um, the 13900K DDR4 does do the best here just because again because of that ddr4 this game does favor that because of its low latency right so it, even then you're looking at a 0.1 second of a difference between the ai times uh yeah but it is what it is right the amd cpu does consistently run a tad slower in this one as well though i guess it also depends on your definition of slow right Escape from Tarkov is up next, and this one has the best showing for the 13900K. We actually have an 8% bump in the 1% lows, which is massive. That, that's, that's actually very, very surprising. So if you are a Tarkov player, you're going to want that 13900K. This was pretty much the only game that I could find where it actually made a tangible difference. So... Uh, maybe this game utilizes that cache differently. I'm not too sure, but this is definitely the one that has the best showing for the 13900K. I know you 13900K buyers are going to use this graph as copium. Oh, one day, may maybe someday I'll actually play Tarkov, so I better buy it now. If this sounds like you, please use the affiliate links down below. Last but not least, Warzone is up next, and you can see here that all of the CPUs and all of the configurations are pretty much within run-to-run -run variants of each other. The, the DDR4 13900K does win by just a couple of percent there, kissing that 250 FPS in the lows, while all the other ones are around that 240 FPS mark, which is... We also know that this game does favor DDR4 a little bit. Not by much, though. If you have, if you do have that A die, it's pretty much neck and neck and tied anyway. And Warzone 2, we don't know how it's going to affect there. But for now, the DDR4 option is going to give you a, a, a six, seven FPS more. The 7950X is the worst showing here, with it almost hitting 220 in the lows. So with all those numbers tallied up, the percent difference that this is over the 12900K, maxed out, mind you, is 3.5% on average faster than a 12900K with a die. On the other hand, though, if we ignore the single-player games and only focus on Warzone and Tarkov, see, here's the thing. 
Um, Overwatch, it doesn't matter. It maxes out. Um, uh, Apex doesn't matter. Fortnite doesn't matter. CSGO doesn't matter. Valorant doesn't matter. Um, League of Legends doesn't matter. Whatever. Any esport game doesn't matter, but those two really, right? So if we take those two games in a vacuum for some reason, then the 13900K is 5.5% faster. I know some people will use that as mad copium to justify the purchase, which is fine if you do decide to get this because you might want 10 more FPS in Warzone or Tarkov. Use the affiliate links down below. I encourage you to support the channel and the unbiased data. Huh? But for anyone living on planet Earth here, 3.5% at best. So you're not really missing anything if you're still on 12th gen, but there's no reason not to buy 13th gen if you're looking for a new platform. Now, for the elephant in the room, that 7950X performed way better than I thought it would with a 4090. Now, what that means is maybe the AMD CPU might uh, close that gap when the uh, AMD graphics cards come out, and then they got smart access memory, right? You might close that gap a little bit. Also, the 3D chips are coming out, so, so we don't know what's gonna happen with those things either. So, what do, I, what do I recommend here? If you have no platform whatsoever, 13th gen is definitely a good buy. Don't hesitate to buy that. I would not pick the AMD platform just yet. They really need those 3D chips to come out. Or the uh, AMD graphics cards are coming out uh, November 3rd here. Uh, I think we're only two weeks away. So that's worth a wait. Wait till I get one of those graphics cards. Then I will benchmark that with smart access memory and kind of redo this whole process. And then we can see if that whole AMD ecosystem is the better buy, but we just don't know until then. If, however, you still own some good DDR4, the, the 13900K, 13700K, 13600K, 13 they are all fantastic CPUs with DDR4. You pick one of these up with a cheap DDR4 board and you're only really missing out on 5% performance from the very top max overclocked DDR5, right? So who cares, right? You might in fact be able to skip the entire DDR5 generation if you have a good DDR4 with a good motherboard right now. It's kind of crazy to think about. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this product here. It is a very good product, but um, it's kind of expensive and it doesn't really wow me in any way, shape, or form. Not like the 12900K did. That really wowed me, but this is more of like a iterative upgrade, right? I'm hoping AMD will bring something new to the table with the 3D chips. We really got to shake it up here because on the CPU front itself, I feel like we're kind of entering a phase of stagnation a little bit. I'm not sure if it's a software thing or an architectural thing, but um, DDR4 is how old now? And it's still holding up to this day and it's going to hold up for the next God knows how many years, right? So we're, we're, in a, we're in a period of you buy once and you buy again in 10 years maybe, right? Anyway, as always, I don't care what you buy. If you want to buy something anyway, use the affiliate links down below. And if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff. Like, share, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of the 13900K. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.